Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you another way to get the Mach number from a picture. If you haven't already, check out my previous two videos about this topic by clicking on the links here or in the video description. So for this video I've updated my Taylor McCall code and put it into a GUI for simpler visualization. You might remember from the previous video that I used the shock angle measured in GIMP along with the supposed Mach number given by the image's author, solved the Taylor McCall equation, and compared the resulting plot to the image in GIMP again. The method I coded up yesterday is just an alternate way to solve the Taylor McCall equations, uh, which takes the shock angle and cone angle as input and gives the free stream Mach number needed to obtain that flow field as the output. This is easier to compare because just eyeballing cone angle agreement from a picture is subjective, but from the Mach number output you can really tell how close you are. I'll be showing you how this works for some of the pictures from my first video, so let's get started. First, let me just show you the GUI. I'm working on the final videos for my Taylor McCall derivation, and we'll also post videos on how to write the code, as well as how to make the GUI that I'll show you here. If you want to be notified of when these videos get posted, make sure you subscribe to this channel. So there are two methods currently included in this GUI. The first has the known shock angle at Mach number, which is what we used for the previous video to obtain the plot that we compared to the image. So you can see here that we have shock angle and Mach number known, shock angle and Mach number inputs, and then you can press solve and it solves it for you. Okay, so the second has known shock angle and cone angle. So if I change this to shock angle cone angle, you can see that the inputs change to shock angle and cone angle. And then these are also now included in this uh, non grayed out portion, so you can edit the max iters and error tolerance. So to find the Mach number requires iteration. So I've set a max iteration limit as seen here. I also set an error tolerance for convergence. And here, the levels just indicate how closely spaced you want the contour plot levels to be. The higher the number, the nicer the picture looks, but the slower it displays. So 100 seems to work nicely in our case. And finally, in the solutions panel, the solutions panel shown down here, the iteration is displayed in red as it runs through the iterations. Uh, and then it'll be white when it finally does converge. If it didn't converge, it will, or if there's no cone solution, it'll still be displayed in red. Uh, the shock angle should be the same as the input uh, up here. The cone angle here will be slightly different uh, than the cone angle input up here, but when converged, it will be within the error tolerance of the input cone angle. Uh, the free stream Mach number is what we really care about, so that's this field right here, and it's uh, what we will compare to the image's supposed Mach number, and then finally the cone Mach number is just the Mach number at the cone surface. Right. Okay, so here's the first image. I'm just going to throw the image up on the screen. I'm not going to do anything with it for each of them, just to show you what we're working with, but I've already calculated the angles from before, so I'm not going to bore you with that again. So the angle for this one, for this particular case, uh, we set a shock angle of 44 degrees and a cone angle of 27 degrees, and you can see that this one says the Schlieren flow visualization at Mach number 2. So if I open up my GUI here, and we're at the right shock angle, cone angle, I'm going to put in 44, I measured it to be 44.17 degrees, cone angle was 27 degrees, and I'm going to just up this iteration count just in case, and change this to a lower tolerance. And then if I press solve, you'll see it starts iterating through, and once it converges in a second, then... Here we go, it converged, and you can see the cone angle 27.0096 is close to 27. And uh, <clears throat> and then you can see the free stream Mach number is what we care about, and that's 2.0338. So it's actually pretty close to the Mach number 2 uh, that they give here, and you can see the output plot as well. Um, and uh, it's not to scale, the axes aren't equal, so it's not going to look exactly like this, but if we overlaid this onto here, as we did in the previous video, you'd see that they would match up, because we actually set the shock angle and the cone angle, so of course they would match up. Okay, here I've opened up the picture of the Mach uh, 1.7, Mach 1.7 cone. If I open up my GUI again, we can change this to the measured shock angle of 38.66, the measured cone angle of 8.68, and I'll leave these the same, and if I press solve now, it'll go through the iterations, and then it'll converge, and you can see that the free stream Mach number uh, from these measurements is 1.62, so that's a little bit off of the 1.7, but it's pretty close. Okay, here I've opened up the cone Mach number 2.2. So again, we can open this up. I'm not gonna change the cone angle because it's the same uh, shape. I'm just gonna change the shock angle that I measured, which was about 27.5 degrees. And we'll solve this again, and you'll be able to see this narrow down, as you can see here. And when it converged, uh, we get 2.23. So that's pretty close to the Mach 2.2. Here's the last of these three images, which is the Mach 3.0 case, so Mach 3 for the same geometry. I'll open up the GUI again, 
same uh, cone angle, but the shock angle I've measured to be 21.45 approximately. And we'll solve here, watch the iterations go until it converges which it does, and then the Mach number, Frisian Mach number is 2.93 approximately, so that's also pretty close. And the last one that I've opened up is the plane flying at approximately Mach 1.09. Ignore the fact that there's a two up here, it's just because I have another picture named supersonic plane. And for this one, I'll open this up again, and the shock angle that I calculated was 77.5, and the cone angle was about 9.8, and then we can run this one until it converges. I forget how long this one took, but this is why I said it's a higher than 200 iterations. So 365, okay, and now you can see that the free stream Mach number it computes is 1.05, so it was right in between that 1.02 that I calculated in the previous video and the 1.09 that they said it was flying at, or maximum flying speed, so, uh, so that's kind of interesting. And you can see this plot is actually a circular plot here. Um, and that has to do with the way that I plot the actual rays coming out of uh, this vertex, essentially. I plot it using a polar plot, um, but I'll talk more about that in my other uh, video about coding up this uh, Taylor McCall simulation. So I hope that was kind of a cool video showing you another method of how you can get Mach number from a picture. And if you're interested in the derivation of this particular method for the Taylor McCall, uh, or interested in the code, uh, then just make sure you subscribe and it'll notify you when I start posting uh, the rest of these videos. Thanks for watching.